Hello, my name is Eva Morris. I'm a Professor of Charity Law and Policy here at the University of Liverpool and I'm also the Director of the Charity Law and Policy Unit. Um, I've had a long-standing interest in charity law which in fact started as an undergraduate when I was studying equity and trusts um, and it was a natural progression that for my postgraduate research I would look at an element of uh, charity law. Uh, at that point I looked at the uh, effects of taxation on charities and although it's many many years ago because although I don't look it I have been an academic for quite a long time um, the issues around charities and taxation are just as current today as they were then uh, just very briefly there's sort of two aspects to it so charities themselves may be subject to taxation and there are exemptions that they are granted and that you can appreciate there are a lot of policy implications there as to why charities should not pay the same taxes as other organisations. Uh, companies, for example, uh, who are on the high street next to a charity, the charity may have a benefit of not paying uh, full rates, whereas the, uh, the company next door, which is not a charitable company, uh, doesn't have that advantage. That's one side of the taxation issue, and the other is around uh, donations to charities and the tax incentives that are given to donors to make donations. And you can see that both those areas are very heavily governed by policy and will change according to the political um, will of the day and uh, what the intentions are around um, supporting charities. So that was something I did uh, very early on. Since then I've written widely on lots of different aspects of charity law or I would now say the law as it relates to charities due to their charitable status because I've moved away from trust aspects, I've looked more at things around regulation of charities, um, different laws that charities are subject to uh, as a result of uh, their charitable status. The general laws apply to them but they might have different particular implications because of their charitable status. Um, so I've written a lot of articles in uh, journals on charity law. I've also been involved in uh, two of the leading texts on charity law, that's Tudor on charities and Picard, uh, the law and practice relating to charitable trusts. So for both those uh, main texts I've had a, a role over the years. Another interesting aspect of, of my work, or what I find interesting, is the externally funded research projects that I've been involved in. So over the years I've put in bids to funders, they might be uh, the ESRC, uh, other charities such as the Esme Further and Charitable Trust, um, or the Leverhulme Trust, um, to look at different, again, different aspects of the law and how they impact on charities. Um, so one of my first projects looked at uh, the changes in the funding environment for charities, so as charities moved from being funded through government grants to being commissioned to provide services and in exchange for contracts with government. Uh, as you can appreciate, there'd be a lot of legal consequences of that move from almost a um, no strings attached um, support from government or local authority to a very strict um, tying up of you will this charity will provide this service in this particular way in exchange for this amount of money. Um, so that's our research on the uh, contract culture. I've looked at things like uh, the legal consequences for charities of merging and I'll say a little bit about that in, in another short film. Uh, we also looked recently at the impact of the Equality Act 2010 on charities uh, together with my colleague Dr Jennifer Sigafoos and I know that she's spoken about that in another short film which you can watch if you're interested. You can appreciate that these kinds of projects have significant impact so as well as having interest to other academics who have interest for example in equality law or in charity law, they also have great interest to charities and to policy makers and that's been an important part of my work over the years and the work of my colleagues in the charity law. The, um, the work of the unit has had significant impact over the years uh, to the extent that our work was one of the uh, law department submissions to the research excellence framework that occurred in the last one in 2014, our work formed one of the impact case studies of the law department. 
Uh, another interesting aspect of our work is in relation to PhD supervision. So over the years, uh, together with colleagues, I've supervised a number of students who have looked at different aspects, again, of charity law. And we've attracted a number of international students. So we've had a student who's looked at um, the impacts of uh, laws on charities in Ethiopia, for example. And I've currently got a student who's completing his PhD studies on improving the governance structures for charities in China. Um, obviously, we also have um, uh, domestic students who have looked at different aspects of charity law. Students at the moment looking at the Charity Tribunal. One of my current colleagues, Dr. John Picton, uh, undertook his PhD here looking at the CPRE principles for charities. So you can appreciate that uh, the work is quite uh, wide ranging, uh, certainly in relation to PhD students we would be interested in contact from uh, potential applicants who have an area that they would like to look at. Uh, the opportunities are endless because charities are so involved in everything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis that so many laws, employment law, data protection law, um, lots of different areas of law impact on charities. Um, and that's really all I wanted to say today, so thank you very much.